The following presentation is brought to you through the paid memberships of NotaryStars.com, the only notary training platform and resource library with over 150 hours of training on every loan product under the sun. Together with our sister website, OnlineNotariesPublic.com, which focuses on notaries who are pioneering in remote online notary, we strive to give you a safe place to ask questions, get answers, gain confidence in your notary career, and achieve success without overfabricating the truths about our industry. If you would like to support us, please consider liking this video, subscribing to our channel, sharing this video with a colleague, or becoming a member and trusting us to help you achieve the level of success you desire. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to MGM. Monday General Mentorship is brought to you by NotaryStars.com. And thank you so much for spending time with us this evening. Today is Monday, uh, November 12th. I almost said March. I don't know where they came from. November 20th, 2023. And my name is Beth Hathu. I'm an instructor for Notary Stars. And I have with me two fabulous co-hosts, Mr. Ronnie Nickel, the founder and co-owner of Notary Stars, Unlimited Ink Notary, and um, uh, Online Notaries Public. And then, of course, Mr. William Bumfrey, a.k.a. Mr. Bill, our expert remote online notary instructor here at Notary Stars. This public training session is held every Monday, except holidays, at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 8 p.m. Eastern. And it's all about you, the nationwide notary and signing agent community. This type of session works best if you can do a few things. First, the session's all about you, so what's on your mind? What unanswered questions do you have? Or would you like to share a win or a tip with your community? Your participation is very much appreciated, so at any time during this session, you can use the raised hand feature at the bottom of your screen and get into queue to ask or share live with all of us. Second, it would be super helpful if you can turn on your cameras, if you aren't driving, it just makes it so much easier to interact with all of you. I just want to mention before we get started, please consider following us on social media. We have an Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and Facebook, and we'll post those links in the chat. So don't forget, you can download and save the chat at the end of this session. And also, don't forget to use that Jot form to pre-ask your questions. And you can find that Jot form link on our Facebook group as well as we'll be posting a link in the chat for you today as well. That's about it. That's all I got to say about that, Mr. Ronnie. Are you ready to kick us off here? Oh, we can't hear you. I am. Um, I actually want to start out today with a uh, just a quick word. Um, you know, it seems, and, and I want to explain for those of you that may be new with us uh, that haven't attended a general mentorship before, you know, at, at my signing service, Unlimited Ink Notary, I get to see lots of mistakes that notaries make because we process about 100 transactions a day, about 3,000 transactions a month. Um, and today we had a particular situation where the vesting was entirely wrong. The signature name did not match the ID, but it was even bigger than that. It was the trust. And the notary proceeded with the signing because the realtor told them, well, this is how they take title. I want to remind you guys that realtors are not, they're not signing, they're not signing agents, they're not signing services, and they're not titled. They're not the ones who send you the, to the table. Realtors, only real role in a transaction is to, uh, protect the signer when they're buying or selling to make sure that those are going wait, that uh, those two pieces are going right. Once they have put that uh, transaction into motion, there's nothing that they can do. It's up to title and the lender or, or title and uh, I got to say this right. It's up to title if it's a seller or it's up to title and the lender if it's a buyer um, to make sure that those documents are correct. Don't ever let a, and we call it browbeating, don't ever let a realtor browbeat you into proceeding with a signing when you know something's wrong with the paperwork. That's when you call the hiring party, 
so that you don't have to go through two transactions without being paid. Because if you call the assigning party, you can stop that transaction, get it, you know, some companies, we do a full fee if you call us at Unlimited Inc. If you call us from the signing uh, table and, and there's a problem, we're gonna pay you because you called and you did what you're supposed to. And that's the rapport we built with our clients. Some companies are gonna give you a print and trip fee. Then they'll give you a full fee to go back for the close. <clears throat> Some shady signing services will try to get you to do it for both, but you shouldn't. Um, if you call and you do your part, but don't let a realtor browbeat you into uh, making some mistake on documents or anybody browbeat you at the table. You know, sometimes the lender's there. They don't understand what title does. There's a component for each process in the transaction. There's the realtor, the lender, the title service, the signing service, and the notary. Sometimes you can cut out the signing service and just be the notary. And, that, and I hope you guys are doing that. But you need to know your chain of command and you always go to the person that hired you. Don't listen to someone at the table because guess what? Their name is not on your paycheck. When you get paid, you get paid from the hiring part. So you want to make sure that you are um, going through the chain of command. So I just want to start out that with uh, the that for food for thought for tonight. Um, Ms. Beth, I think we need to get started with the, the first question for tonight. Alrighty, this is a jot form question that came in. Actually, it's left over from last week. So we'll do this one first. Um, it says cash out and HELOCs in Texas. That's, I guess, the subject. What are some of the agents doing to find a location that will allow them to utilize uh, a location for the signing? I've had several offices say that because of liability, they didn't allow it. So it in the event that you're not really sure what she's talking about here, um, she's just saying that uh, cash outs in Texas, which include HELOCs, have to be signed in a title office or in, a, in an attorney office. And that means they have to lease or rent or you know pay an hourly fee to use somebody's office. Um, and she's having difficulty finding an office that will allow her to do that. Unless we have any Texas notaries here in the group that want to type into the chat some of their um, suggestions for her how to go about that, I'm going to have to deflect that question to- Angela Parks is in the house. She might be able to help with this if you want to raise your hand. Um, but uh, you go. keep going. I just noticed that we have her in the house and she's definitely a long-term notary star. So Valerie Cam Dennis also runs the Safe Haven for Notaries Facebook group. She's somebody else that you want to put on your list and contact her. She should be a great resource and be able to help you with that question. Or um, you can also type that question into our Facebook group and maybe those Texas notaries can help you as well. And before we move on from that, uh, Ms. Angela, uh, do you have any any? Any thoughts on that subject since you are the Texas notary in the house? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a member of another group that is all Texas. And there was a list going around a couple years ago, um, especially during COVID, where some offices were allowing notaries to use it. So I'm going to look for it. Then I'm going to make sure that I can share it outside the group. And I can, um, if the, if the person, well, I'll put my email here if they want to email me. Perfect. That's so nice of you. Thank you for that. Um, and I'll ask them if it's okay to um, share it because it's it's another paid group and it's it's a closed group for Texas only. And I don't want to presume that I can distribute it yet. Okay. Okay. And, and thank you for coming on, Miss Angela. I hate to put you on the spot, but uh, you know you you've been a a wonderful notary star along the way. So I appreciate you speaking up there, <clears throat> Miss Beth. While I'm looking for um, while I'm reading out the next question, which will definitely be in my realm, is there any way that I could get you to look up the uh, Texas Notary, or not Texas Notary, but the Notary Safe Haven Facebook group and look for that link and post it into the chat? Sure. Okay, perfect. I think that would be uh, a wonderful thing. So the next question, definitely in my realm, um, is I'm a new, I received my commission in May 2023. How do I get customers without spending a lot of money? My budget is very low. Well, welcome to the club. <laughs> okay. 
I don't know uh, if you're here tonight, if you wrote this in or not, um, but I, I'm not being a smart butt when I say uh, welcome to the club. Every business owner in the world has to spend money on marketing. And if you are not spending money on marketing, you are not really operating like a business. It is a tax write-off. My marketing course, which is only $25 more than the Notary Star level, comes out to $59.95 a month. I teach you everything on digital marketing about walking in. It has a tax deduction just to learn how to do those things. There's not a notary in my class that actually applies themselves that's not on the first page of Google or on the first several pages of Google for whatever they want to. Um, but I have very little patience for my budget is low. I get it. You're starting a business. But however you need to come up with those funds to get a website going, get your Google My Business going, get your Yelp going. If you don't know what you're doing, you can't really go for marketing step by step. It's really not a step by step thing. You really have to dive in, dive in, divulge and get into understanding what marketing is. Um, and I get it. We don't have a lot of money. Good thing is digital marketing doesn't cost a lot as long as you know how to do it. I specialize in teaching that here at Notary Stars. Um, so I invite you to come to the Notary Star Plus marketing level. That's $25 a month. And there's not a single thing in the course other than, you know, I tell a lot of students that they need a second screen and the cost of your website. You're not going to spend a lot of money. You are going to spend some time uh, going through those things. And if you are hurting that bad, you might need a side hustle for this new career like DoorDash, Lyft, or Uber while you're getting yourself off the ground. But you're starting a business and I don't have resources cannot be your excuse. I wish I could say that it's, you know, the case, but it's not. If you're starting a business, most of your money needs to go th toward marketing to get that off the ground in the first place. Of course, we put education first here at Notary Stars, but you should be marketing your business and unafraid to. It is a tax write-off. It is something that we all have to do. And if you are not actively, if your only source of income in this industry is signing services, that should be because you have a spouse who's supporting you or you don't care what you make or your area, your area is so booming that you don't need to market. But I doubt that's true for everyone or at least 80% of the people on the call. So if you are in this for the long haul, if you are in this to win it, you definitely have to know how to market your business. Um, I'm ready for the next question, uh, Ms. Beth. I think you should read that one out and give your advice on this. And then I want to put my take on it as well. And I think Bill should uh, maybe comment on this one too, because it's in the realm of kind of tech. Okay. This one says, should we be concerned with doing voiceover videos on social media in this age where AI um, can use our voices in scams. What do you think first, Miss Beth? Me? Mm -hmm. I think you're fighting the losing battle. You might as well dive in. And there's not a whole lot we're all going to do about this. I think I can tell when AI voices over uh, a video. Um, it's not the mouth doesn't quite match what the video is replaying um i don't think you should shy, shy away from it yet um i don't know what do you think well let, i want to get bill's opinion on this and then uh what do you think bill do you think people should be conscientious of their um using their voices for verification purposes mm. I I don't know that I have an opinion, really. I mean, I don't think it's one of those things that you can escape. Uh, it's it's one of those things that uh, I'll plead the fifth. I don't really have a good response. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so this question is actually really a wonderful and timely question right now. Should I be using my voice on social media to advertise my business? Absolutely, you should. People should know the sound of your voice. I can't tell you how many times I pick up the phone for unlimited ink or make a call and they go, oh my God, it's Ronnie. Um, they recognize you. They get familiar with you. They want to speak to you. Unfortunately, we are living in an industry right now where people are making commercials with other people's voices. And yes, 
ransom uh, phone calls are being made. I, I read a couple of articles, and this actually came from Felicia Bass, um, who I'm glad wrote this question in. There have been instances where people have taken voices from just regular TikToks, not even business owners, and called the family and said, it says, mommy, help me, mommy, help me. And it sounds just like the kid. And they say, you know, we want $5,000, $10,000, $50,000. One person got a million saying that, you know, I have your child. A um, couple of things in the age that we live in now, you may want to let all those that are close to you, let them know like, hey, I've created commercials with the sound of my voice um, and create a code word for them. If anything ever happens that says, if I'm ever screaming for help, I'm going to say this word while I'm doing it. Um, you can also contact your bank accounts and let them know that you do not want voice recognition for this at this time. When I, I'm with Chase and I actually turned off voice recognition, they say that they can use it. You can actually request the bank to turn it off to use voice recognition for your bank account. So this was actually a very timely question. And yes, AI technology could come back to buy us all, uh, but that's something that we're going to have to pay, uh, you know, uh, pan through over the next, you know, year or two. Uh, but yes, scammers have already started using AI technology for the voice, meaning that they take a snippet of your voice, and if they have enough of it, they can have that AI sound just like you over the phone, but you need to let your friends and family know that this is actually taking place, and that, uh, you have a code word if something's bad going on that you're going to use with them. And then with your bank, just turn it off. Uh, Ms. Beth, this next question also came in from Felicia, and I love this question um, because I think it's a, a, a wonderful question, and I want you to answer it. It says, what is the procedure to use during general uh, notary work when the signer says they have a POA to sign documents? Do we need to see the POA? Um, do we document the uh, date, signers, witnesses in the journal? So I'm going to let you roll with that question. A really, really, really good question. I know in when we're doing loan signing work and they're signing with the POA, we never have to vet that capacity that they're signing in. That's always done by title and the lender. But when it's general notary work, it depends. There are some states that actually have it in their statutes that require you to view the power of attorney or the document that gives them to power the power to sign for someone else. Other states don't require that. But then there's another handful of states that say, hey, it might be a good idea to request to look at it. So it just depends on your state. Best practice is on general notary work, I would probably ask to see it because while we're not responsible for that totally, we might get caught up in some kind of scam scheme that says you knew about it, Miss Notary, when you went in there and notarized that document. So just protect yourself and follow best practice of always wanting to see the document that gives them the power to sign in that capacity. And yes, document out the yin yang in your journal. If it's a power of attorney, there's probably witness requirements. So all of that information needs to go in your journal. Now, Ms. Beth, I want to add this in just because we do have a lot of loan signing agents on the call. And I know you mentioned it, but I want to reiterate this to loan signing agents. When you go to a signing and it's got power of attorney language on the documents, that means that the title company and the lender have already seen the power of attorney. That's why the vesting is on the documents. OK, so you don't have to see it. They've already viewed it and approved it. However, if you get to a signing and someone tells you that they're signing power of attorney for someone else, you can't proceed with that signing unless it's actually on the documents and the vesting. OK, that means in the signature line vesting. Um, vesting is different when it's on the deed, but on the signature line, if you don't see power of attorney language, we stop, we call the assigning party, you can't proceed. Now, if they tell you, you can have them print it and put it above the signature line, that's one thing, but that's going to be 1% of the time. Okay. That's a very small percentage. Of, and remember, we are not executives of a title company or a lender. So we don't make exec executive decisions. We just report, um, 
we just report um, what we see at the table. So if you're at a loan signing and there's no power of attorney language on those documents, that's when you call your assigning party and you say, hey, someone's trying to sign power of attorney because you're probably going to have to have those documents redrawn. Yeah, exactly. Ms. Beth, I see that uh, we have Delora in the house tonight. Uh, perfect timing for kind of like a little segue. If you guys are not aware, um, I believe I'll let Ms. Dor Delora tell you the, the dates, but uh, we are definitely pushing the awareness of health insurance this month because open enrollment started on November the 7th, and we only have until a certain amount of time uh, in order to, to get everybody any health insurance. So, Ms. Delora, why don't you say hello to everybody and remind that everybody here who you are? Hey, everybody. Thanks for having me. Uh, this is Delora with U.S. Health Advisors, and I have agreed to be uh, helpful to Ronnie and Beth and all of you to help with health insurance coverage since you all are uh, self-employed. Um, there are plans made specifically for self-employed or 1099 people, and now is the time to review your health coverage and take a look at what is out there for you. Open enrollment is here until December 15th for a plan starting January 1. If you don't do it by then, you have until December, uh, January 15th, sorry, and that plan would then start February 1st. So um, it definitely is now to take a look at your options and see what's right for you. And I'll help you look in the marketplace and I'll also help you look at plans that are specifically made for you as a small business owner with, with a PPO network. Um, and I'll put my contact information and my Calendly link in the chat here. So you can set up a time to chat with me or contact me um, by calling or texting if you'd like. And Ms. Delora, I also put in the chat uh, the link to the Notary Stars page where we have, you know, your Calendly and all of that stuff. But Ms. Delora also did a wonderful presentation for us on what she has available. And I just want to explain this to everybody before you uh, pop off up here. Sometimes the marketplace might be better for you. Sometimes your spouse's insurance might be better for you. And sometimes Delora's insurance might be better for you. For those of you that don't have any pre-existing conditions and you're not planning on having a child in the next near future, and you know, depending on a lot of factors, you may be able to get a policy significantly less covering what you need um, instead of having a policy that's covering everything that could possibly happen. And we all know that they don't pay anyway. Um, from the marketplace. <laughs> so you may be able to get a, a policy that is actually less expensive. Some of you, it may be more expensive, but you have to weigh your options before you make those purchases, especially as small business owners. You know, $200 a month can add up to a lot over the year. That could be the, the cost of your tires when things get busy again um, and, and all of your old changes. So mm -hmm. that's why we have partnered with somebody that's a professional like Mr. Laura. And when I say partner, we don't get any kind of kickback. We just found somebody who knows what they're doing um, when it comes to health insurance and brought them into the Notary Stars umbrella. Yeah, and to piggyback a little bit off of what you said, you know, sometimes there's people that come to me where their spouse might have employee coverage through their job, but when adding you as the spouse or any children you may have, the cost is astronomical. So sometimes it's best for the spouse to stay with their employee insurance and then you to go someplace else. And, and I'll help you look at all of those options. Thank you, Ms. Delora. We really appreciate you stopping by and we hope that you'll continue to stop by on every session that we have for the, um, you know, for the time for open enrollment. And then she, you'll Absolutely. be here all year. You'll be here all year on the page and checking in throughout the year uh, with us as well, because uh, we want you guys to stay healthy and you can also write insurance plans throughout the entire year, not just open enrollment, correct? That's right, but don't wait. You know, um, yes, I have plans available all year long, but some people, you know, there's reasons they have to be in the marketplace, whether it be financial or health based, and you don't want to miss open enrollment. So, yes, I can help you all year long, but now is the time to really check so that we can make sure that you are on the plan that you need to be on. Perfect. Um, before we move on, Ms. Uh, Laura, Ms. Angela, is your question related to health insurance policies? Yes, it's an easy yes or no question before I call. 
is there such thing as gap insurance for for health insurance? Because I'm trying to piece out my W-2 at 62, but I need something in between 62 and 65. Yeah, yeah. There's some supplemental insurance that you could get. So if you have a deductible or something and something happens to you, that policy would help you pay for that sort of thing. So yeah, definitely. Okay, cool. Okay. All right. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Oh, sorry. We cut you off there. Go, go ahead. You got the unmute again. Okay. I was just saying thanks for having me. And I look forward to working with you and happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to you. Thank you. All right. Um, we're going to get back on track with questions that came in on the job form. And then we have, we, we have some great questions tonight. This question came in from uh, Miss June Siegel Hill uh, out of Virginia. And this is a marketing question. So if you, uh, if you're not in my marketing class and you are trying to do things on your own, um, this is the question. And I, I want you guys to know it's kind of important here. It says, we know that backlinks uh, on other sites can improve our site's importance and rankings in Google. When you refer to the black links on other sites, do you mean any place where our URL is used or do you mean an actual hyperlink that points to our site? Is there a difference? So actually, there is a difference. When you put your information into a website um, like Notary Stars, that creates a backlink. So when you have a listing, on Notary Stars, and you put it in, it actually hyperlinks your website so it can click to it. When you create a Facebook page, it hyperlinks to your website so that people can leave Facebook and go to your website. That is a healthy hyperlink, and you want to look for places to push up on social websites like Notary Stars, Facebook, um, Twitter, uh, any place that allows you to create a hyperlink. If you just type in your website, Mentioning your website is okay, but unless it's actually hyperlinking, you're not getting the benefit of it. And just for those of you who don't know, you can hyperlink out your website on Notary Rotary, Notary Cafe, um, pretty much any website that's not a signing service like Snapdocs, ZigSig, or Signing Order. I think ZigSig actually allows you to. Um, but those are uh, very healthy for you to, for you to do. And if you have a website, you want everything in the world pointing at it. The more backlinks you have, the more authority you're creating, but don't forget that you also want to point to other websites as well. So if you backlink from Facebook to your website, you need to have your website pointing to your Facebook uh, page. You need to have it pointing to your notary stars listing. If you back anything that you have a backlink where you list your website, it needs to be reciprocal, okay? So if you list your website on Notary Stars, you need to say, find me on Notary Stars somewhere on your website. If you have your website on Notary Cafe, say, find me on Notary Cafe. If you're on Notary Rotary and you put your website in, it needs to be reciprocal. Google loves that. It's, you know, kind of like you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Google was built off of that. Okay. Um, and if that went over your head, you definitely need to take my marketing course because it won't. Um, Let's go on to the next question here. Uh, it says, how is it possible to be able to use my credentials? Oh, I loved this question. Um, how is it possible? Uh, I think it should be, is it possible to use my credentials as an American notary to perform notar notarial duties overseas? And I asked this because an attorney friend of mine thought that there is a possibility. So, Bill, I think this is in, in your wheelhouse for sure. Is there a possibility of using your um, American notary credentials to perform notary services overseas? Well, actually, yes, because you're not really performing them overseas. You're performing them where you are. So it's your venue. So wherever you are physically at at the time, I'm in Nevada. So every signing I do happens in the state of Nevada in my time zone. Um, so, yeah. I'm able to do overseas. As a Ron notary though, right? As Ron, yeah. yeah. The yeah, reason yeah. I called on Bill is because he's our Ron instructor <laughs> and I wanted him to kind of, to kind of uh, answer that. You can't travel anywhere outside of your state's borders to perform notarial acts unless you're commissioned in that state. You definitely can't cross into Canada or Mexico 
um, unless you work, I mean, I, I know they have notaries at the U.S. Embassy, uh, but unless you're employed by the U.S. Embassy and they are, you know, allowing you to perform notarizations within their standing structure, uh, the only way that you could perform notarial acts is through Ron, where you're commissioned, and while you're commissioned in that state. You can't travel as a Ron notary outside of your state. You know, for right now, I'm located in Arizona. Alexa, mm -hmm. stop. Um, sorry, she reminds me of everything. Um, the You can do it. Like, I can travel to Flagstaff. I can go, go to Tucson. It doesn't matter where I'm at in the state of Arizona as long as I am in Arizona when I'm conducting a Ron signing. But I can't go home to mommy in Georgia and work while I'm there. Not going to happen unless I get a commission in Georgia. Uh, to be able to do that. And that's going to be kind of hard. So you cannot use your credentials to perform duties overseas unless you're performing them as a remote online notary uh, at this time. And you still have to be physically located in the state where you're commissioned in order to perform those notarial acts. Miss Beth, uh, by the way, guys, we have about 30 minutes left in the session. We have tons of questions, but if you guys have questions, Please get those hands raised virtually to bring your questions into the session. We love when the live viewers also uh, ask their questions about, you know, anything that's going on. It could be related to marketing. It could be related to Ron. Um, it could be related to signings, notarial certificates, anything that you need help with. Um, Ms. Beth, why don't you bring up the next question from the, from the, this one actually came from the hotline. Yeah, this was a hotline question, which, by the way, guys, if you're a member of Notary Stars, you should all know that you have a hotline number you can call at any time if you have a question, right? Well, not 24 hours a day, but almost. So this question came into the hotline. It says, um, the signer's ID shows Sarah Helen Smith, but the documents have Sarah Hoverson Smith. They're using her middle name her maiden name as the middle name because that's how her trust was signed and set up years ago. The signer wants to scribble her middle name so that title won't be able to distinguish it as Helen or Hoverson. Is it okay to do that? So I bet you're all shaking your head one way or the other and it ought to be this way, right? The first issue is that she cannot identify this signer as the same person as the name on the documents. She has to be able to ID her. So if she can't get past that, I don't care how she's signing her name, scribble or legibly, it's not going to help her. So no, no way, no, no regardless of how she decides to sign her name legibly or a, a squiggle dot dash, you still need to positively identify her as the right person to be signing the documents. Your only path forward on this is to use a credible witness or have the documents redrawn with an AKA signature line. So I bet half of you picked up on that, yes? Yeah, Carol shaking her head. Yeah, she said, yeah, I figured that from the outset. So yeah, so if you can't identify them, it doesn't matter how they're signing their name. All right, we have a hand up in the crowd, Mr. Mickle. All right, Miss Laura, why don't you come on and ask us your question for the week? Okay, so can you hear me all right? Yep, we can hear you just great. Okay, so um, this goes back to the previous um, stuff you were talking about, uh, about being in different states and being able to sign notarized in different states. So this brought up something funny in my head. We have a lot of snowbirds out here in Arizona. So if somebody was a snowbird who was a notary in their other state and then lived here part of the year, say six months out of the year, could they be a notary here too? Yes, there are actually, uh, I actually know of two or three notaries that have been Washington notaries and Arizona notaries um, yeah. uh, to have dual commission. So yes, you can live in different places and, and have dual commissions. That was just something that popped in my head when we were talking about 
being in Georgia or something like that. It, it does vary by state. Usually, sometimes it has you have to prove that you have a business uh, somewhere, like you're a realtor and you need the notary stamp or those sorts of things. Every state has its own laws, so you can't watch this one video. You have to pick the states that you want to do that with, go to each one and ask them what the requirements are in order to do it and then apply for it. Um, there are some states just because you're on the border within a certain amount of uh, distance, you can get it. It just depends on, and there are some states that say, no, you can only be a notary for our state. And Arizona is not one of those states that says you can only be a notary in our state? To my knowledge, uh, that is correct. Okay. Because I have known several notaries that are Washington notaries that come down here for the for the for certain times of the year. Okay. Just curious. Thanks. Thank you. Ms. Beth, our next next question is up for uh, well, actually we have our hand raised uh, from Kirsten. Um Kirsten, why don't you Hi. Uh, so in the notary group that I'm in, we were discussing different forms of ID that are acceptable in Arizona. And there's a question on page 17 where it mentions the IDs that other government issued identification cards. Its description is obviously unexpired, contains the customer's signature or a photograph and physical description. Is it a signature? Or the photograph, or is it signature and photograph? <laughs> Jeez, did you find another anomaly in our handbook? <laughs> Page 17. <laughs> while, Beth is, while Beth is going to, the, I see other people looking at this manual right now. While Beth is going to this manual, first of all, I love this question because one of the things that we all have to do as notaries is be able to read our notary manual and know what we can or cannot take. I know some of you out there don't have states that have notary manuals, and I encourage you to start talking to your Secretary of State to put one together. Um, I'm going to see what Beth says about this. Are, are, have you already located it, Miss Beth, or do you need a little bit more time? No, I have it, but I still need more time because sometimes even a single word in our manuals can change, obviously, how we perceive that statute to be written. So whenever you are in doubt or confused, that's the first thing you want to do is go back and pull up that statute. So I'm going to look at the statute if you'll give me another minute or two here. Well, well I'll give you another minute or two because this will give me a perfect time to explain to all signing agents out there. Um, you know, I understand like Ohio, and I, I'd love that we have so many Ohio notaries joining notary stars at the moment. So I am not talking about Ohio notaries in a bad light, but you guys have it so easy in the country when it comes to I, IDs, okay? Um, <clears throat> I wish I lived in Ohio because basically you just have a utility bill and somebody's identified. However, most of the country is not like this. And I wanted to explain to you guys that I have a rule of thumb that's personal and it has always worked really well for me. If I don't have a state ID for the state that I am notarizing for, so like if you don't show me an Arizona ID or you don't show me a United States passport, which trumps everything, I'm stopping to think, can I take this? Does it fit my state rules? Does it, you know, in most driver's license throughout the country are going to fit, but I stop and I think, what's different? What's wrong? Why is this not in my normal process? Now, when you get a, your state's ID, you're so used to seeing them, you still have to go through your checklist in your brain, okay? I need to look at the driver's license number. I need to look at the uh, issue date, the expiration date. I need to look at the photo. You still do your identification, right? But when you are not presented with your state's ID or a United States passport, that's when we stop and think, is this acceptable in my state? Because that's where I see notaries mess up every single day is when they when they are just on autopilot and they're like, oh, it's an ID. I can take it. You, yeah. You have to look at all of the items. And when you don't get one that you see every day, you stop and think, can I take it? Can I check my manual? And if you tell your signer, I just need to check my manual, make sure and take this, 
no one's going to fault you for doing your job. Um, Ms. Beth, are you ready? Yeah, so the statute actually reads pretty close to what is printed in the manual. Let me go back uh, uh, over this again. So we already know we can do a driver's license or non-operating uh, identification license card, right? Non-operating ID card, a pass U.S. passport, armed force forces ID card, and an inmate ID card or any form of inmate identification, which here it's normally a bracelet, right? Looks like a hospital bracelet. Um, and then they list other forms of government issued identification cards. Here's what it says in the manual, unexpired, contains the customer's signature or a photograph and physical description, including height, weight, eye color, and hair color um, issued by the United States or a state tribal government. Well, the statute doesn't read exactly that way. It says another form of unexpired government identification issued by the United States, a state or tribal government to an individual that contains the signature or, we have that again, a photograph and a physical description of the individual. It doesn't say height, weight, eye color, hair color. That's not what the statute says. It says a description of the individual. And that is satisfactory to the notarial officer. They didn't put that piece in the book. So that's how the statute reads. It says, hey, yeah, all of those things, except for it has to be satisfactory to the notarial officer. So that's a pretty interesting find. You guys are just reading. What is this? A book club for your group? <laughs> What's the book of the day? Oh, the notary journal, right? Uh oh, did I lose you? There you, there you go, Kirsten. There we go. Okay, I had muted myself just in case. And then, um, no, it's just another group. And then we get together every third Saturday and we go through the manual. So yeah. That's what we do. But so you're saying. We can have a signature and that's it if it's satisfactory for the notary not your saying that's what the statute's saying that's what the statute's saying yeah no interesting that's about, very interesting as long as it's <laughs> unexpired and issued yep. by a government or u.s government or tribe okay. what about um this the ids the driver's licenses that say not a, for federal id like the star ones or the ones that don't have the stars you know the driver's licenses I'm talking no, about? No, we can still take the driver's licenses that say not for federal identification. Okay. They're talking about Homeland Security, but we can take them because it falls into that category of a driver's license. Okay, I thought so. I just think somebody had asked that question on your presentation on spotting a fake ID. So I was just ah. okay. okay. Okay, thank you. You are welcome. And thank you so much for coming through our terrible manual. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> so the next question that comes up uh, for tonight is, uh, what should I show in the Google My Business uh, verification video? First of all, I'm posting in the chat right now. If you do not have a Google My Business, please, please, please do not fall into the trap of paying $50 to $900 or 300 something dollars because it's 85% off on Black Friday on how to set up your Google My Business. I did a free one and I talked it over with my marketing students to just publish this because it's stupid. And I guarantee you one of those idiots out there, I'm gonna call them an idiot because I want you to forward me the email when they send it to you and just forward it to me and CC me publicly and say, you're an idiot because he did this for free. Um, I'm posting in there uh, into the chat, how to set up your Google My Business uh, listing. It's on our YouTube channel. And I'm also posting <clears throat> what happens if your Google My Business gets suspended. Do not pay anybody to set up Google My Business. It's absolutely free. There's nothing you can do to maximize it. It's all BS. Um, there are things you can do to kind of put in all the information. But Google My Business only works as Google My Business. I put the two videos that you need to get started in there. Sure, there are some uh, information in there. I taught a class this Friday on it. Uh, we actually have just reset the marketing class. So I have my advanced students on Wednesday nights, and then I have my starting all over again on Fridays um, class. But those are free videos. 
But somebody asked, what should I show in my Google My Business verification video? And I'm going to make this uh, clear in a nutshell. You're going to need to line up everything so you can film the video quick. You're not going to need a long video, okay, when they ask you to do a video verification. But you need to have your car parked next to your mailbox or close. If you live in an apartment complex, I'm sorry. You're going to have to walk fast this day. You're going to take your key to your car. You're going to unlock that car. You're going to show them your license plate. You're going to show them up. you unlocking them. The car, if you have printer, mobile scanner, show that that really quickly. Make your way. Make sure you show the street address. If you can't show the street address, point to it and say these are the cross streets for the street address. Make sure you can see that. If you live in an apartment complex or a large community, make sure you get the house number that you put in, even though you're not showing it to the public. Go through the door. Have your commission laid out on the table. Print it out. Let them know this is my home office. This is where I work. This is how I service people. Here's a copy of my commission. You know, get it over, get over it. Um, let them know that you are servicing the public and then let them know you have been appointed by the state to service the general public. That soliciting is important, that it's there for you to uh, be able to do that and they will verify your listing, okay? You need to be able to do all of that and you wanna show all your equipment in your office. You can do a quick pan, pan around and say, that's my mobile scanner, that's my mobile printer. That's it. One continuous video. Uh, you don't need to do a 30-minute presentation. You want to do a minute and a half presentation. Okay? That's all Google is wanting to do is verify that you're a real human being, what you're doing, what your business is. And for notaries, um, you do want to put your commission in there because it shows your license from the state that you're allowed to serve the general public. And you, you just need to state that on camera. As long as you get those components in there, they're going to verify your listing. Okay. Uh, Miss Melissa, you have a question coming up next. Okay. Hi, guys. Hi. Um, I just came across a form today. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it was just an oath, but it was a notarial cer certification. So do we just give the oath and and stamp that i've been told yes but um and i've heard about it before because it doesn't say subscribe to so we could just do the oath and stamp that um no we all have state specific um language that needs to be in our certificates that identify what type of notarial act we're doing so not knowing exactly what it says. Are we talking about someone making a statement and signing the document and then your certificate is just weirded differently? Worded it's a, differently? <laughs> it's a it's an alone signing. It's the address affidavit and they're signing it. And then below is the venue. And then it just says sworn to before me this day. It doesn't say subscribed and sworn. So and oh that is different, isn't it? Yeah. Oh. Um, sworn to before me this blank day, and it's got a byline on all of that other stuff. No, all it no, all it has is sworn to me before this day of, and then you put that, and then just your notary public signature and commission expiration. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. Um, it's not really a short answer for you, Melissa. I don't know that I would use it because it doesn't say, because we know when you have a jurat, it says subscribed and sworn to generally because that's what the act is. It says you came before me and you signed it and you took an oath. But that certificate doesn't say that you came before me and you signed it and you took an oath. It just says you came before me and you signed it and you, or you, it came you before, came me, before and me and you took an oath. Yeah, on this day. So don't know that you can use that particular certificate. Um, I'm going to say something else. In this instance, if that, if that were an actual certificate that you could use, if that address statement, that signature, uh, and your certificate is all on the same page, you technically, on a jurat only, don't need to have a byline. We know in loan signings that if we don't have that byline on jurats, they almost always will kick it back. For you, 
I would suggest you just go ahead and replace it because you have a question on that signed and sworn, subscribed and sworn piece, and just go ahead and attach your own loose certificate to that one and not waste too many brain cells trying to figure that one out. Okay. Thank you. You bet. One last question from Miss Carol. Oops. Yeah. There you go. Can you unmute? Yeah. There. How's that? Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So I go. Apparently, I started a Google business page. I must have done it a while back before I got in Ronnie's class or anything like that. So I pull it up. I, I pulled it up and I'm going, oh, look what I did. You know, I don't remember doing it. Well, it says I'm verified in King. Okay. But I'm not verified in Bullhead City. So how does that happen? I mean, do I have two business pages? I'm confused. Did you do it by the name of you? Did you do it by your name or did you do it by the name of your company, Miss Carol? By my name. By my name, Carol Ann. All right. Let me take Boy, you. Uh, you did it by Carol I, Ann? Yes. I think I did. Maybe I did one by Carol A and one by Carol Ann, but I think I would have put my full commission in. So I see that you that you are on Google My Business. Um and I only see one listing. I'm just taking a look. Yeah, because so I, I what went in there you know, to edit my profile and all that kind of stuff. And it came up, I was verified in Kingman. It was <laughs> one color printing, but I wasn't verified in Bullhead City. And I actually live in Bullhead City, not Kingman. I wouldn't uh, be so worried about that. Because um, when I look at it, first of all, you have a great headshot for that. Um, oh. <laughs> I, I hope my headshot looks that good. Um, but I'm, I'm looking at it now and I don't see anything wrong with it. Now I know how oh, sure. are those two cities apart? Well, they're about 35, 40 minutes apart. Okay. Um, okay. Kingman is in the North and Bullhead city is in between Kingman and Lake Havasu about halfway. And did you ever change your address or have a different address? No, no. Okay. Not not for a long, long time. Okay. So when I see it, I'm showing all your service areas. I'm showing uh -huh. uh, Tapak, Bullhead City, Lake Havasu, yep. Mojave, Kingman, and Mojave. And that says that those are all your service areas. Right. Uh, I think you those can are... more into those, but... Uh, <clears throat> well, the more I add, the further apart, you know, like I could put in there chloride littlefield i always get things for littlefield that's like two and a half three hours away one way well you, can, gonna... you can also get granular because you have six that are listed there you can get granular. Uh -huh. so you have this the city names um what i'd say you could do is add the county name that you're in because you can add okay. to and then you can also add zip codes that you really know so if you know you're getting more add the additional zip codes for just specific areas because you can you can list the entire city, the zip code, and the county. And you can list okay. them independently of each other. Uh, but I don't see anything, and I couldn't find anything else on your, your listing. Okay, but uh, it says I'm not verified. So that means I got to do that video, right? Well, I'm finding you when I go to Google My Business and I put in your name, and or if I just put in your last name in Notary Public, it comes up and it's definitely serving on Google. Yeah. It's not so then I'm not I'm not gonna do the video unless somebody tells me I have to. Right? Yeah. You're definitely already showing on on 
on Google My Business. So I think I'm the fourth one on there. That's not too bad. Well, you were the first not first one for me because I did the the search based on your name. Um, okay. But you're definitely showing. It wouldn't show me if I I wouldn't be able to find you if you weren't verified. So you are verified. Oh, okay. I'll go along with that. I like that. Yeah, <laughs> but you do want to be able to, you know, go in and it looks like you did your services. You need to get some reviews, so you got to start asking for some reviews. Well, yes, I'm going to do that. I'll make that. sure to leave you my first one tonight. Um, okay, I did one for Unlimited Ink, but I'm not sure I got a real good review on that one. I screwed up one page of it. And, uh, cool thing it, about it Unlimited was, Ink, as long as you fix your errors, we don't leave any negative reviews. You don't fix your errors. Good, I fixed you're, my You're going to let them know that you are not a customer service or a notary. Um, but, uh, no, if you, if we don't have any problems like that, so you don't have any bad reviews okay. for us. Okay. Well, I'm going to have, tell them to go back in and say how wonderful I am. I will, I will, I'm going to leave it on my screen tonight. I'll, I will leave you your first review on there, uh, as a Thank you. beloved notary star. I will leave you a wonderful review on your Google My Business. Thank you, honey. I love you, Ronnie. Oh. One question we had also left over from last week, Ronnie, and this is kind of an important question. It says, are Monday mentorship replays open to the public? Oh my God, I love this question. So not only is general mentorship available to everybody, I, tonight we've had a light night, we're going into Thanksgiving weekend, uh, but we have lots of mentorships every week, sometimes hundreds, almost 200 people on the call. I would love for you guys to share this with a friend. And they don't have to be a notary star. You don't even have to come to our website. This is about the notary community. Um, and actually, I'm going to post in the chat the meeting link. Uh, I just thought that we could do this. So let's see. Participants, copy invite link. This chat, uh, this link that I'm posting into, please put it on your calendar for your time zone. That's uh, 5 p.m. Pacific yes. time, 6 p.m. Arizona time, and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard time. Share it with a friend. Say, hey, come, come to this with me. I'll see you on camera. And turn your cameras on when you get here. Um, we are always accepting, you know, any questions. And the replays are actually available on our YouTube channel. So if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, if you aren't able to make it, but put it on your calendar. If you're not in a meeting, if you learn something here tonight, you're probably going to learn something on the next one. We don't repeat a lot of stuff. I mean, people tend to have uh, lots of, you know, different questions every week. And you're not going to learn everything in one day. Uh, but it is a good time of week. And Monday sucks. So why not spend it with family? Um, <laughs> so if you go to our YouTube channel, um, all you have to do is click on the videos section. And I'll po uh, post that in the chat as well. There are two ways to get to our replays um, when they post. First is to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And then the next thing is we actually just added this on the Notary Stars channel. And I'll share my screen and show you. So on notarystars.com, if you come to our website, first of all, you can always pre-ask your question if you're logged in. Uh, but then as you scroll down the page here, right up under the calendar of events where you can log into the meeting every month, you're gonna see the replays for everything that we've done so far. So you'll be able to click on that link and go back and watch all of our YouTube videos, or you can do it just, uh, just from our YouTube uh, channel as well. YouTube, if you subscribe to it, will allow you to be notified when that replay posts. Um, but then we also post those on our Instagram channel. We have a lot. So if you, throughout the chat, please download the chat because we tell you everywhere to follow us all the ways, but uh, we want to make sure that you get to those replays. General mentorship is open to everybody. It's open to everybody that was here tonight, all your friends. And I say, when you see that email comes out that says we're logging in live, forward it to one of your notary friends. Bring them into the fold. Uh, this is a very safe place to ask questions and learn, and we want people to, to learn that way. Um, we are at the top of the hour tonight, so um, Miss Laura, I'm sorry if you want to email your question in, we'll be glad to, to get to that, um, but I want to leave you guys with this for the holiday. Uh, first of all, if you drink and drive, stop. 
if you drink, take an Uber or a Lyft or have somebody else pick you up. Um, there is nothing wrong with having a little bit of alcohol. I'm actually having some right now. Um, I have no shame in saying who I am or what I do. I actually have to go work after this and I'm going to be taking an Uber to our company mailbox to pick up paychecks so I can pay notaries because this is a holiday. I have to go pick up the paychecks, process them tomorrow, deposit them a day early so that they get into the bank. There is nothing wrong with drinking. There is something wrong with drinking and driving. You can take someone's life. You can ruin your career. And as a mobile notary, if you get a DUI, you are not going to be operating much longer. Okay? That can actually cause you not to be able to be a mobile notary. So if you drink, do not drive on the holiday season. And then I also want to remind you of this. Everyone's going to get a reminder anyway, but if you are not a Notary Star member yet, we strive for signing agent excellence here. We are not telling you that if you buy into this program, you're going to make six figures because that's BS as well. Most notaries don't make six figures. We all want to get there, and a lot of you will. Most of you will not. But we teach you signing agent excellence here so that you know how to impress your clients. We teach you every single file type under the sun. And when it comes to marketing, I leave no stone unturned. And we're the least expensive, what we offer the most. Right now, we have 30% off for an annual commitment and only 50% off for a monthly commitment for the first month. At an annual commitment, you can get 30% off. Now, if you've already been grandfathered into your prices for previous years, those of you that have not done an annual commitment, it's 30% off for a full year. And that code is signing agent excellence. Okay. All one word, all in cap, all in caps, signing agent excellence. I did not create this website or this community to joke around with your money. It does take you committing to the education that's behind the curtain once you pay your money. But if you do, we offer more than anyone out there. And we charge the least of anyone out there. I would love to have you be a member, whether you're watching the replay or whether you're, yeah, thank you for putting the code in there, Miss Beth. I would love to have you as a member and I would love to create a real valid community. I'm not going to be your cheerleader saying, yeah, you can do it, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to charge you $1,000 for that. If you want to pay me $1,000, I can start being your cheerleader right now. But if you want to pay me a little bit of money and you can be your own cheerleader, I will show you everything you need to know about this industry. All you have to do is pay that $29.95 for the notary store level or the $59.95 for the marketing level. And the cool thing about our education is once you've got it, you don't have to pay anymore. You, we have members who've been members for almost five years now because they want to be. And I'm going to increase prices next year so you can get grandfathered into the prices that you are, that we have right now. Everyone else out there is charging thousands of dollars, $500, $600. We're not. And we are a community of excellence. So if that speaks to you and your heart and you're in this for the long haul, consider crossing that threshold. And with that, I'll leave you with our signature goodbye. If you are not naked, please turn on those cameras and let's give our signature wave to each other. Come on, everybody. I want to see those cameras turn on. I know if you are stuffing your face with a sandwich, that's okay. Turn it on. You can wave one hand and eat, one, uh, eat at the same time. If you are not naked, turn on those cameras. We don't care if you're tucking your children in. Just run over, turn it on. Let us see you tucking those ch uh, children Please be safe on this weekend. Okay, this is a holiday weekend. Lots more accidents on the road. I love you all. And Miss Beth, how do we really say it here at Notary Stars? Well, happy Thanksgiving week, everybody. And we hope the rest of your week is excellent. Listen, um, somebody said, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go with someone. So this is everybody trying to get somewhere and it's all about how we get there together, guys. So please just remember to be kind, reach back and grab the hand of another notary next to you and bring them along with you on that journey. Thanks, guys. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody.